Yeah, welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is the Polity, a program that takes a deep dive into unfolding political events within Nigeria and many parts of the world. Uh, at this point, let me introduce my guest. two special guests who will be joining me. They are regular faces on the Polity. On my right is uh, a well-known face on the Polity, uh, Ibrahim Garba Eisman. He's a media consultant, he's a communications strategist, and also the... Uh, spokesperson of the Solidarity Empowerment Club. He has also told me behind, before we came to the studio, that Arewa Consultative Farm has also appointed, giving him an appointment. Gerba, you are welcome to the polity. Thank you very much for having and, uh, me. Thanks for joining us. Yes. Beside me is another known face. is our in-house political analyst. He's a media specialist, Richard Ori. Richard Ori, you are welcome to Captain Television, the polity. It's my pleasure. Gentlemen, I don't take your presence here for granted. So much is happening within the, the, the polity. Our president has flown into neighboring Equatorial Guinea and they have already signed bilateral agreement. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has signed bilateral agreement with Mbasogo, the president of Guinea. How did you receive the news, uh, Garba Isman? Well, for me, um, it's a good news for uh, Nigerians and those uh, within the West Africa sub-region. Because I can recall uh, this is uh, the second time he's signing this type of bilateral agreement with, uh, we are signing a uh, bilateral agreement with Equatorial Guinea. Um, it is necessary now, especially that um, we're having crisis in the petroleum sector. And as you know, uh, Equatorial Guinea has a lot in reserve. They are a giant in petroleum. So, uh, it wasn't out of place for him to have uh, traveled with uh, Melikiari, uh, who is the NNPC LGMD, and some other officials. And um, I see it as a time for us to begin to look inwards within the African sub region because in his presentation, uh, President Bola Metinibu made it clear that African solutions are within, and uh, we should not be looking outward to seek for African solutions. Uh, he further expressed his commitment to helping the African sub-region to develop. But again, he cautioned that uh, one of the key elements that is um, affecting most African countries is that type of, that of um, tribal sentiments. And uh, of course, you can recall some years back, around the 80s, some Igbo professionals uh, were evacuated from Equatorial Guinea because of the harsh economic policies at that time. Yes. And you know the leader uh, has been in power for how many decades now? So the system he, he there... Know, the, Mbasa will become president at the age of 37. There now, it's almost and he has, 80. He's, he's 84. 84. So uh, if you see, you begin to question what kind of democracy are we practicing mm -hmm. in Africa? Is he truly a role model? And I see uh, President Bola Metinibu uh, who is chairing the ECOWAS uh, heads of state, uh, is using one stone to kill two birds. And I believe he will call a time on uh, the president to rethink some of these decisions because most times during elections, the policies were twisted to favor him. Um, the electorate, the, you know, the elections are always rigged in his favor. Uh, this is not a good thing to market the African brand. So with these key issues bordering on Africa, that is why within the sub-region, we're very, finding it very, very, very difficult to cohabit and do trade and take advantage of continental free trade agreement which has been established. So I think um, these bilateral relations which were signed by Nigeria and Equatorial Guinea should open more doors, more opportunities, especially in gas and petroleum, petrol gas, so that um, we can have more import, especially in crude oil, which you know, uh, we're not doing so well in the international market. So I think um, we should take advantage of this moment and commend, um, rather cement these uh, ties so that Nigeria can do business freely with Equatorial Guinea and take uh, you know, comparative advantage of the gas reserve which they had so Nigeria can show up its production. I think um, it's a win-win situation for the federal government and the people of Nigeria and Equatorial Guinea. Uh, Richard Uri, what do you think? 
Yeah, I, I will align with my with my brother here in what he has said. I I thank God. I want to thank God uh, for the president uh, to to look inward now and see that uh, the continent is so fragile. Mm. And if you look at what has happened from the uh, uh, this uh, end bad, bad governance uh, protest, you will see very clearly that uh, there is so much uh, interest now from the West and uh, these uh, world powers like uh, China, Russia, and the uh, US in Africa. And uh, this trade uh, agreement that they have signed uh, is coming too late. You know, the Organization of African Unity, after the establishment, the basic uh, focus of uh, Organization of African Unity initially was uh, for, for peace negotiation, to ensure that there is peace in Africa and all of those things. And when they saw that uh, that wasn't uh, doing a lot in terms of economic angle, they were not focusing on economy. Mm. They were only focusing on how to ensure that there is security in African sub-region, that Africans uh, who are who were in the uh, 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 who were in the hands of uh, the colonial powers yeah. uh, had their freedom those days. And after they saw that uh, they have to shift ground from just uh, uh, being a peace uh, makers fr to having an economic uh, vibrancy. Uh, somebody like uh, uh, Maman Gaddafi, they thought it twice to see how Africa will shift from that angle to behave like uh, the European Union, where the focus is uh, security and both equality uh, economy. Mm. Then uh, in 2000, the organization, uh, the o uh, AU, African Union, was established in 2000. And the focus basically was how they will establish some of this uh, free uh, movement of uh, uh, goods mm -hmm. and services within the African sub-region. And now the president who is the currently the leader of African, Afri African Union, if he's taking this move, then the, our foreign policy, I think, uh, is looking towards that direction now. Yeah. Because initially when he came on board, I see that... Uh, he wasn't having interest in, you know, in foreign policy. Mm. And uh, if we can look towards that direction now, it will help us a lot. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, this uh, agreement, bilateral agreement that they have signed, uh, recently, was it in April or May or so, uh, they, there's, there's this uh, uh, Afri Energy Bank yeah. that uh, they came together yeah, some African countries came together to see how they will see Afri Energy Bank uh, established. And they all agreed that the center should be in Nigeria. Nigeria. And uh, you see Equatorial Guinea, they, uh, they have a good reserve of uh, energy. And Nigeria equally too have a better reserve of energy. And this present government, the, the focus is on uh, energy. Mm. And you can see it from the CNG issue and all of those things. But by this agreement now, the question that's come to mind is that how will this, <coughs> how will this uh, open up uh, free movement within the African sub-region? There are too many other things that is hindering businesses within Africa. The other time, uh, Dangote made com a complaint that uh, if you go to Europe, business uh, uh, tycoons in the European uh, countries, they, they don't find it difficult. They have just one passport, but in Africa, you must stamp uh, your passport if you are going to, let's say, from here to Ghana now, you have to stamp your passport. If you are going, like uh, somebody like uh, Dangote, he, he shouldn't have uh, that uh, bottleneck mm. in traveling anywhere in Africa. Mm. So those are things they equally have to look into. And uh, what we gain from this uh, energy bilateral agreement signed is, 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 is huge. It's huge because in the African continent, we focus more on the uh, agricultural issue, uh, oil, crude oil, like the boat country now, they are good in oil, they have oil enough. And, uh, and, and, and if they are shifting from uh, just oil to uh, energy now, mm -hmm. I think it will, it will boost the economy of the continent and again give uh, uh, opportunity for employment mm -hmm. and some other mm -hmm. developmental issues. Integration as well too will uh, is, is 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 opening up for uh, uh, African uh, integration, which uh, in the past we don't have. Mm. And uh, from the statements of the president that I I read, 
Uh, he said the uh, African uh, uh, led solution to African problems is the way forward. Mm. And he made mention of uh, peace, uh, good governance, peace, democracy, and uh, what again, three things he mentioned. All of these things, the uh, within the purview of mm. uh, democracy, mm. Mm. because the basic uh, uh, ingredient of democracy is peace, and that is why it was established and uh, exported to this mm. side of the world by America. So, if we can, you know, you should do, you shouldn't just stop in the uh, Equatorial Guinea. Mm. You should equally take this campaign to other parts of Africa. There is very, it is, it is a very serious issue now that. Uh, uh, our continent is fragile and uh, prone to 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 to, to uh, a conflict, and all of them, all leader, all the leaders, they are elders. Like the Equatorial Guinea president mm -hmm. is an elder, our president is an elder. So 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 they have to put the continent in a way that as they are going, they are close to their exit point. Mm -hmm. As they are going, they will leave a very sound continent. Uh, 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 in peace of peace uh, for for the rest of us, so it's it's, it's a good uh, development. Well, Ivan uh, Garba, you and I know that we live in a in a country of you know high spectacle of of cynicism. So many Nigerians are cynical about this agreement, and you don't blame them for that because of the rhetorics of the past. And many people have heard them say they hope that this is not one of the rhetorics by African leaders particularly seat tight leaders. Ambassador has been there for about 40 something years. What, how do you react to that? Well, to me, you don't throw away the baby and the bait water. We are not interested in how long he has been in office now. This is an established democracy for those people in Equatorial Guinea. We are looking at comparative analysis, comparative advantage. We are in business to do business. If you look at the Gulf of Guinea, which uh, the president, our president is trying to explore. Um, that gulf is of comparative advantage to Nigeria. Mm. And um, now that we have a minister in charge of the blue economy, it's a challenge to the ministry to explore that area because of the fishery and other, you know, uh, natural, you know, uh, the biodiversity. Biodiversity. Mm. And there are some mm. natural mm. elements that are found within the Gulf of Guinea, okay. of which billions of dollars can be uh, realized from there. But this agreement will free that area for Nigeria to penetrate and do business. So I think um, whether you like it or not, the, our president spoke uh, with a Pan-African tone. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, directing the affairs. And at the same time, he's asking Africans to become more thoughtful about what we give to the, their, their masses. It's not about the time for him to say he's going to address the issue of Thai leaders, of the military intervention in African politics and all that. Developmental is something that is central, and at the same time, people must wake up to own it and uh, use it without abusing it. So it is commonplace in Nigeria. Uh, politics have grown for over 24 years now. You must have doubters here and there. But he's more focused about what he can do within the immediate to rescue Nigeria from these uh, abyss. Because if you look at it, the level of inflation has gone as far as 40%. But of recent, we see the price of tomatoes and other perishable items going down and you are opening the borders and you are creating more opportunities for young people to come into governance. It's a very, very challenging moment for the president. So for him to recalibrate, he needs to be more thoughtful. He needs to do a lot of research. He needs to go into bilateral agreements. He needs to sign agreements. He needs to explore other opportunities across the world. So beginning from Africa, whom you know, is a troubled continent because of infiltration of the West, Western ideologies, this is the right time to strike a deal. Mm -hmm. So for me, going to Equatorial Guinea is a, mm -hmm. is, I think he has got a very good points. One for fisheries and at the same time for oil and gas mm -hmm. and improve in security. Remember I went with yeah. the Minister of Defense. So around, along that coastal area, we need to have improved security yeah. Uh, you know, because of the pirates yeah. around that area. That's right. So I think Nigerians, we should, be, we should not look at the man, 
we should look at the message mm. and what is coming to give to Nigeria. So it is about time for us to focus more on the policies of government, where it's going, where it's getting it right. We should give him thumbs up and support him. If it's going the wrong way, we should advise not to attack and we should be constructive in our criticism. I think uh, we're, on the, we're on track. Okay. Uh, I just want to announce to our numerous viewers that our telephone number will soon be displayed by our producer. It is right here on your screen. You can begin to call in so that you can also make your opinion, uh, give your opinion so that the program will be interactive and conversational. Let me come to you. Uh, when uh, Iceman said, we shouldn't look at the messenger but the message and he has also cautioned that we shouldn't throw away the bath water with the baby. Um, I just want to ask you, uh, Richard Ori, the, 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 the Equatorial Guinean president has been there for about four decades. Now, uh, not yeah, for about four, more than four decades. Now, he's, he's, he talked, at the signing of the bilateral agreement, he, did, he talked about inclusivity, the need for African leaders to entrench inclusivity, to eschew nepotism, and then to be democratically inclined. But uh, elections have not been held in that country for, 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 for decades. How would you react to that from what people are saying? Mm, it's just like uh, my brother said, uh, we shouldn't be looking at the age now. If what he is saying is not just a mere propaganda, mm. because in propaganda, what you are saying is different from what you mean. So if it's not just mere propaganda and they mean what they are saying, mm. it will be very good for all of us. If you look at, uh, at it, uh, America uh, is the exporter of democracy to mm. us. Mm. And the person leading America today as president, uh, Joe Biden, I don't think Joe Biden is younger than the Equatorial Guinea president. <laughs> no, he's not. Joe Biden should be older than him. Mm. Uh, so all we are looking at is uh, good governance. Yeah. And uh, if you from the Ed Bad Governance, uh, because I learned a lot from this Ed Bad Governance uh, protest. Mm. From the Ed Bad Governance, you you see clearly that uh, the the thinking of the 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 elite is different from the thinking of the masses. And uh, the elite class they like uh, uh, liberal capitalism. And why the masses in Nigeria and some part of African country they like a uh, socialist economy mm. uh, where you, you they rely so much on government to provide almost everything yeah, and uh, and that is why you see the agitation heating up i learned a lot from the head bad governance uh, protest mm. so if uh, the president and the, uh, the president of nigeria and president of uh, equatoria guinea they have come down as elders to see that uh, we have had enough and uh, we have seen enough because the, the, the actors in what is happening in Africa generally are the agitators and uh, them the, the, are the leaders mm -hmm. and they have heard from the mm -hmm. actors. If, if, you, if you want to take a decision as a, as a leader, what you look at first is the environment where, you, where the issue is. If you look at the environment, then the actors within the environment, you check what their mind is saying and they have seen. And if uh, through this uh, bilateral agreement and this uh, uh, gas uh, uh, arrangement mm -hmm. will, 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 will be sustained, I think that will open up a lot of things. It will give employment, like you said, not just gas, the uh, uh, blue economy mm -hmm. is here and uh, we are the giant of Africa and even uh, our, our minister now, he traveled with him. And uh, him too going there, he's, he's, he wasn't just there because uh, the president is there. He's, he will equally meet with the uh, minister in charge of uh, the same ministry mm. with him mm. and they will have their own meeting, discussion. And in such a situation, that uh, diplomatic arrangement will equally bring a lot of development to okay. Nigeria and citizens will benefit from it. So they, they, they have started it as elders. Other younger presidents within the African continent should pick it, should, should follow their lead now and let us have good governance in Africa. What we are praying is govern good governance. Okay. Politics is gone. We are done with politics now. A lecture has come and gone. Mm -hmm. Now is governance. And so governance. what we want is governance and development. Once Africa is developed, 
There is no how anyone, anyone will talk about anything. If you look at other countries of the world like uh, China, uh, India and other America, they check development from uh, uh, how citizens, how many number of your citizens can comfortably change their wardrobe uh, in a month or in, a, in three months can change their wardrobe. How many of them can travel by air? Like, uh, let's say, in a month, how many times can they travel by air? How many times can they ch uh, renovate their house mm. in the in the year? You just let's just put it in a year. But in Nigeria, you hardly you can you can hardly find uh, maybe five to ten percent of Nigerian citizens mm. renovating, putting their house in order for one year. The one you where you are, maybe you do your painting for this year. In the next seven eight years, you have not done another painting. Mm. Is development that is the way development is not just how many times you feed in a day now. So, so what we want is how this continent will look inward and see how the youth, because mm. we have youth in good numbers these mm. days in this, in this continent, in this part of the world. So we should utilize all of this that is in abundance okay. and then face uh, security to see how okay, we will go to the solution mm. part. We'll get to the solution. Yes, yes. Uh, Iceman, both of you have spoken so glowingly and loadably you know, with regards to the uh, mutual benefits, uh, you know, arising from these uh, bilateral agreements. But, you know, the, the, the president's travel with retinue of uh, government officials that included the, the Minister of State for Petroleum, the NNPCL managing, group managing director, Mele Carey, and uh, the defense minister. But conspicuously absent is the private sector. We know the world over, Government is the enabler, but the oil sector is private sector driven. I didn't see the likes of uh, Dengote and uh, all those key players in the oil sector. What's your reaction to that? No. Was it by act of commission <laughs> or it was inadvertent or commission? No, naturally, on this trip, um, if it's official, uh, there are going to be sidelines to exactly. discussions that will be held behind closed doors and um, uh, it depends on the number of days Mr. President is Three going days. to speak Three days. or to be in Equatorial Guinea. So I think um, the basic, or rather the basic idea behind this trip is that of business and at the same time reintegration, realignment. Mm. So um, on the sidelines of that, where you have the NMPC GMD, you have the Minister of State for Petroleum, Heineken Lepobiri, mm. These are key players mm. for government, and um, it's within the African sub-region. So it is too early for you to say, we are bringing Dengote on board, we are bringing Lumelu on board. We are signing policy documents mm. to free the atmosphere so that we can trade freely within these two nations. If that is established, we are talking of shoring up um, our crude oil production to go as high as... Um, 2.5 million, 2 million barrels per day. <coughs> we are talking about uh, fixing our refineries, which has been postponed about six times now. Promises have been made by the GMD that, yes, the Portaco refinery will come on stream since December last year, and uh, it has been reviewed further. A lot of money has been spent. So if you are trying to create competition for your energy sector, you look outside, within the neighboring African countries, to do the kind of a peer review mechanism should be put in place. So for you to now look at areas of your weaknesses, what are those things that are going wrong in your country? And um, I believe Mr. President will take a step further by asking questions. Okay. And these are the things he's looking out for. He's going to be directed in approach. Without sentiment to other, you know, manufacturers, the giants we have, because we have the IOCs as well. Mm. It's trading that took him there. And that is why I made it clear, I'm going for a bilateral relation. Was you know, looking at the oil and gas, and at the same time, we look at the Gulf of Guinea there. So within those belts, I want to strike a deal. Now, striking a deal, which means with my Nigerian passport, it is easy for me to assess the opportunities okay. that are there. And Dangote, mm. who for long has been crying that uh, he's not properly served the crew oil from Nigerian waters, uh, you know, would be much happier if one, okay. if there's a deal in place mm -hmm. and the price is favorable to him rather than going to Europe. So 
that will create a robust economy for mm. both nations and that will, you know, lessen the pressure on consumers, motor vehicle users who go to filling station to buy fuel on a daily basis because you can see the long queues we are seeing today in various parts of the country. This is the right time. I believe um, with time, I just want to advise Nigerians mm. to be a little bit positive, mindset, develop positive mindset because this man inherited an economy that was totally in bad shape. Totally in bad shape because one, I will not criticize President Buhari, but there were people who were entrusted to deliver good governance, but um, you and I understand that he was so disappointed. Nigeria was so disappointed, <laughs> disappointed. So the president is trying to fix some of these problems. Okay. You see. Well, Richard, I don't know how you are going to react to this question. It's a follow-up to what you just said. Uh, you know, um, a, a deal was 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 signed between Equatorial Guinea and Nigeria through the two uh, presidents, Ambassador and uh, President Tinubu. And uh, don't you think it would be more auspicious, you know, if uh, the president had traveled with members, key players in the oil and gas private sector, so that there would be robust discussions on the sidelines of the bilateral uh, conversation? Mm, yeah, the, the strategy behind what uh, they have done, I, don't, I think uh, it's not far from what my brother have said. Now is not the time that you will mix up uh, things. Now is the time for for government uh, uh, arrangement, and if you 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 rightly mentioned, you said uh, the business sector, the uh, core capitalists, and uh, if you should allow them to interject into what they are going to do at this official time of a uh, gov government, I think uh, they will look, they will see your strategy. And they will capitalize on your strategy to come and re-strategize to see how possibly how to even make your policies to fail mm -hmm. so that they will continue to to monopolize the system and uh, maybe some of those things are things uh, because the president as he is he has strategies who think with him who give him advice so they have their reasons for not uh, going along with those set of people for now so by the time that uh, the system is stable and uh, what they are trying to put in place is in, in proper shape, maybe that will be the time. You know, some of these people you mentioned, like Elumelu, Dangote, uh, and all of those uh, business uh, tycoon within the mm -hmm. Nigerian economy, they, they, they are the ones that have formed the Nigerian uh, Economic Council today. I think a president constituted uh, something and inaugurated them about how many uh, just last last month. Not that they just uh, sh uh, shelved them; they just uh, pushed them aside. They are not aside. They are not aside what the government is doing. They will be brought in, but not immediately. I think uh, the point uh, my brother raised, I totally align with him, mm -hmm. and uh, is is very strategic. I think that is what has happened. Uh, you, 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 uh, uh, Grandpa Isman, you earlier talked about. Uh, the Ministry of Blue Economy. And it's mm. a brand new mm. ministry under the Tinubu led administration. Mm. Aside benefits accruing, the mutual benefits accruing to the, new, to the two nations in terms of oil and gas. Mm. Uh, you have also uh, mentioned the benefits that could accrue from the biodiversity and the ecosystem mm. at the Gulf of Guinea. Uh, Talk us through your own personal assessment of what the Blue Economy Ministry has done, what you have seen so far <laughs> in the last one year, and what you think they can do by way of taking advantage of this agreement? I think um, when, <coughs> when, when, when Mr. President was creating some of these ministries, uh, a cross-section of Nigerians uh, criticized it by saying some of these ministries should have been merged. Mm. You have the Ministry of Transport, you have the State Minister of Transport, you have the Minister of Blue Economy. These are people occupying one building. Mm. And um, I see it as not an excessive executive abuse, but I see it as everybody should focus on one or two things that will grow the economy. Somebody must be involved in international. Some of, somebody should be involved in local and maritime and all. It's spelled out. Now, Blue Economy will drive the maritime sector 100%. So going through the maritime sector, which you have the Nimasa, you have the MPE and all that, then you have the Gulf of Guinea, which has, you know, 
we have advantage because it's to our own advantage, the Atlantic Ocean. And a lot of people never knew the benefit of the global economy. Because if you have advantage on that high sea, where you have fishery, you have a lot of mineral resource there, it increases your revenue base, your GDP. Mm. But right from inception, when the minister came in office, there was no clear blueprint on how, what and how is going to approach um, the, the sector. It took him time to settle down, almost six months, because I was there mm. to follow up on this transport ministry and all that. I want to have access to the blueprint. Uh, the minister of um, transport focused on railway, and then um, the state minister of transport focused on other, you know, local, you know, internal arrangement, the administrative part of whatever. But the blue economy, which I believe should have competed fiercely mm. with some other sectors that are revenue driven, because you can get as much as three, four billion dollars in a year from blue economy. If you check around that area, there's a lot of money from fishery, from export and import and all. That. So we, it's about that time for Nigerians to begin to ask questions. Because if you are not open, Nigeria will not know really what uh, is going on there. But some of us that intend to probe, there's a level to which you reach you say, no, uh, you, you cannot go beyond this point. It's a new mystery. We need to acclimatize. We need to begin to adapt. And we need to begin to bring in resource persons, you know, consultants to help us develop a blueprint. One year is enough. But from the reports I gathered recently, yes, yeah, some monies are coming through the blue economy. But what I want to see, Macaul, is that... Mm -hmm. um, especially in this government, is that of uh, transparency. The reason why you are having this leakage and you are seeing this protest because government is not transparent enough to know exactly what uh, the ministers are doing. Count it on your fingertips. If I ask you to mention 10 ministers of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I begin to guess. Nigerians are not seeing them. They are not, res they are not gaining from their expertise. So it's time for, uh, like you rightly pointed out, let them more let us see what we can gain more than if you need the services of uh, the private sector to help you drive that blue economy they are very much available mm -hmm. within the uh, mm -hmm. you know west african sub-region let us make it an open governance let us begin to invite people professionals to help us drive you are just administrative here yeah. but a situation whereby you engage professionals you see that area that sector alone Honestly, we generate a lot of money like uh, oil and gas okay. for the country. I see opportunities there. Well, uh, viewers, our telephone line is still displayed on the screen. Please do call in. Uh, let's hear your views so that the program can be interactive and very, very more conversational. Let me ask you, Richard Ori, uh, he has mentioned some of the benefits that will accrue through maritime activities, fisheries, uh, biodiversity, uh, and, uh, oil and gas and whatnot. Let's take this caller before I ask the question. Hello, good afternoon. This is the Polity from Captain Television Live. Yeah, our first caller. Hello. Yeah, good afternoon. Go ahead, sir. We can hear you. Good afternoon. Yeah, we can hear you. Your name and where you're calling from? I'm Alex from Kobe State. Alex, go ahead with your contribution. So we pray they are not deceiving us. Yeah, we pray because we are hungry. <laughs> that was the cynicism I was, I, I was talking about, about earlier. Is there anything you can respond to that? Because uh, I talked about uh, cynicism. I you don't to, blame Nigerians when they talk, speak this way. Uh, what uh, Before I react to what uh, the, the caller said, uh, let me uh, chip into what uh, my brother said. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Uh, that uh, blue economy, 
we have a lot to, to gain that, from that. That was the exactly blue. the question I wanted to ask. We have a lot to gain from the blue economy. All over the world today, the uh, making ways through the seashore. And uh, if you look at China uh, being uh, uh, struggling with America, and now the two countries, countries, they are the only one in charge of, uh, they are the only one, America and the China, they are the only one in charge of uh, uh, economic order, world uh, global economic order today. It's, 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 the, it's, the, it's the sea. And, uh, but Nigeria, we have that opportunity. This blue economy, what I will advise, I will want the, the, the minister to do is that he has to clamp down on those uh, private uh, sectors, uh, private individuals, even some other countries coming into Nigeria to having their own port authority. Mm. is criminal. Mm. Like now, Dangote has his uh, refinery. Very close to Dangote's refinery, he has built port authority for mm. himself. Mm. And you wouldn't know what they are bringing in. Mm, okay. And who is checking what they are bringing in? How, how is Nigeria making profit from that port that they have uh, uh, okay. uh, 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 constructed for themselves? Even China now has a, a, a port authority in Lagos mm. where they bring in their goods into the country. And if you look, what is causing problem between China and India? Mm. Is this South, uh, South Asia, Asia uh, South, uh, Ch China, South uh, China port? Uh, China, uh, port. port yeah. Because they are encroaching into India, mm. Indian uh, uh, waterways, uh, waterways. Mm. and they are even constructing, presently now, what will cause a serious problem between China and India now is the port authority that uh, China is constructing mm. within the Indian, Indian zone. So, so they don't play with it. And if you want the problem, the crisis between uh, Russia and uh, Ukraine now, that the sea zone within that area, it's not uh, conducive for businesses to flow. Do you know where they are passing through? Turkey. And Turkey is making so much money. Mm. So much money. So Nigeria, we can make a lot of money, yeah. like he said, mm. from this blue economy. Okay. If only the mm. minister can stand, stand sit up and close all the gaps. Okay. Close all the gaps. Uh, good afternoon. This is the polity. Go ahead, Richard. If the minister can sit up to close all the gaps. What are those gaps? The gaps is, how can an individual in a country like this con have a, a, a personal, personal port. Uh, port authority? Mm. How can a country like China mm. come into Nigeria and they have their own port authority mm. where they bring in their goods into mm. the country? Mm. How are we making profit from these goods? Why do we even know what they are bringing in? Whether it's arms. Mm. That they are bringing into the country. Okay, okay, Who right. is checking all of this? You have already, uh, you have opened, you have written. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon. Hello. This, yeah, good afternoon. This is the polity you are on. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. Hello. Please turn down, could you, could you turn down the volume of your television? Turn down the volume of your television and then go ahead. Turn down the volume of your television, says it's, it, it is afternoon. It's not morning, it's afternoon. Where are you calling from? <laughs> He's saying good morning. You're calling from Brass. Is it still morning in Brass? This is almost, it's almost three o'clock. It's good afternoon. Good afternoon. Go ahead. I'm calling from Brass. Turn down the volume of your TV. I can hear you. Hello, sir. You can hear you. Go ahead with your comment, please. Ministers, all the ministers they now own is apart from the minister of uh, FCT and uh, the minister of work that is working. All the other ministers they are sleeping. Okay. Now you are talking about blue economy. Nobody even knows about the <laughs> the CEO. I'm talking. I'm calling from Brad. I'm. You see. He has a lot to give us. He has a lot. Things that are happening. You see, the minister is in Abuja. Does he know what is happening in Brad? Okay. That's so the challenge. The that you, that That's the challenge. You look for somebody who can drive the economy, not those people that will not know what is happening. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Richard, I want you to react to this, and then you also react. Uh, nice man. He, he, said, a very, he made yeah, a very, smart very, point. Exactly, very, very, very smart point. point. In a very short, very strong point. Mm. Because 
like brass now the minister doesn't know like he said he doesn't know what is happening in, in brass, brass. Yes. so so like uh, i pointed out the uh, dangote port authority mm. how many of our custom officials are there now monitoring what they are bringing, they are bringing into bringing nigeria in. mm. from outside the country no no custom there and what what is the essence of that port that mm. he has constructed with his uh, refinery there so so a lot is going on within the seashore that we are not benefiting anything mm. and god has blessed us with this uh, uh, this with, with the water that yeah. is around us yeah. now god has so many countries you why russia is doing everything to see that ukraine is not they do not slip out of mm. their hand mm. it's because once ukraine slip out of russian hand russia does it will not have access to water mm. and if they don't have access to water economically they will crash mm. and they won't wouldn't want it to happen mm. so every country that really want to grow economically they value water but in nigeria we don't value the water mm. that mm. god has given mm. to us okay. we only channel our energy towards a uh, crude oil mm. crude oil crude oil and the crude oil is even from the, the same water so now that uh, the god has given the current president this wisdom to create this ministry of a blue economy they should bring as people that have the knowledge of that uh, sea area to the ministry as ministers and they should bring as part into the, the the department as a directors and people that will work in that blue economy should be experts good researchers who knows about this department not just a uh, political uh, friends and they uh, associate mm. to say go here whatever you can make out of it make and, and leave that we once we continue in that direction we will not grow if we like in africa now in the whole of africa today the three major order in the world today no african countries in any the world uh, security order mm. controlled by us that's why you see us almost everywhere you, they are the police of the world mm -hmm. the uh, global economic order is only us and, and uh, china bipolar a global technological order is a uh, multipolar mm -hmm. some other countries they are part of it no african country is part of anyone mm -hmm. but now god has given so bless us with natural resources that we can use to even at least be part of this economic order yeah. they are coming in china mm -hmm. is here russia all of them they are here struggling we are seeing them every day yeah. struggling on how to come and tap from what god mm -hmm. has given yeah. to us yeah. but we here we cannot stand up to see how we will utilize this and stretching our economy okay. for the growth of our country it's bad mm, it's, uh, i can see how passionate you have been <laughs> responding to this last uh, uh, uh question let me ask you uh, uh richard has alluded to the fact that countries that are you know littoral by nature are blessed and both nigeria and equatorial guinea are coastal countries with enormous potential and he has entertained fear and apprehension you know, for individual, you know, uh, players in the oil and gas industry to own their own personal, let me put it in parentheses, personal ports or seaports. Do you share the same fear? Well, Macaulay, if you look at... Because of the complacency of uh, <laughs> <laughs> if the control in Nigeria... Look at it, I want to look at it from another different perspective. I want to remind you that in those days when the Europeans were scrambling for Africa, partitioning it so that everybody can take its own share, mm. the same thing is replaying itself out okay. through mon monopolistic tendencies of mm. individuals and groups. These people constituted themselves into global cabals, mm. like what he mentioned around the coastal areas. Um, if you go towards the river Rhine areas, there are a lot of opportunities lying there untapped up to now. Mm. We focus more on the crude oil as if it's our only major mineral resource that mm. can strengthen our economy. This is where we're getting it wrong. Within the land borders, internal areas, we have you know the shelter belt, which is rich for agriculture and other mineral resources. We have gold deposits. We have a lot you know, in this country. But for the fact that government become weak and focus this energy on the you know, the energy on the uh, petroleum sector, that is why our economy is not standing on its feet. So I think we should go back to the basics and block all these loopholes. I remember during Buhari administration where, you know, uh, this man that occupied 
the CEO for a long time, Atiku Abubakar mm, company, mm. was withdrawn through Hadis Abala Osman. That was a big defeat, you know, a, a big goal because one, he has been there for over, according to research, for over 10, 15 years, he never pay any, you know, tariff to the federal government, even if it pays, it's not transparent enough. So there's a lack of transparency. Then again, we have the Nigerian <coughs> Customs Service that needs proper policing. Mm -hmm. Who is watching the Nigerian customs, how they operate? Who is watching the immigration service? And the immigration service now, they are purging themselves. What about the Nigerian customs? If you go to Idiroko and Seme border, traders are crying out because of this border trade. They are freezing them. They are under strict conditions. They are operating under strict conditions. So inflows through trade is becoming very, very cumbersome. That is why you see them traders are crying out on a daily basis we are not getting it right now if we begin to weaken the businesses we have in this country there's no way prices of goods will not go up there's no way you are not going to increase poverty because you focus more on tapping and getting from people who are doing these businesses mm -hmm. rather than you creating opportunities through the seashore you see if you go to brass and other areas around Bayelsa, how many posts do we have around there? Mm. Look at the diamond we are supposed to have done during Yaradwa's time towards Lokoja. Have we succeeded in doing that? You need to create more ports, not for individuals. You okay. know, for, even if you are creating, allow private sector to manage it so that it can get resources. But you have infiltrators from China. Mm -hmm. China has taken, has got, gotten a, you know, a harbor. You are going to provide for a country like South Africa, no, a country like Russia. Mm -hmm. And some European countries, very soon you cannot police your land borders again and the seashore because one, you have infiltration. The other time, the large, they caught a large catchy of weapons that mm -hmm. were imported into this country through the sea. So there's a lot of leakage in the system, yeah. there's lacking in transparency. Mm -hmm. And like you, you pointed out, we have you know square pegs and round holes, people are giving portfolios, they are yet to sit down and plan and say, Okay. This is my agenda. Mm. This is what I have to bring to the table. They go for fake meetings and will be. I think they should televise the fake meetings. What are they doing? What are they talking to, Mr. President? Mm. Remember, you know, one man cannot do it alone. You have the executive, you have the legislative, and other arms of government. But again, at that level, we expect that they should do more in harmonizing ideas at that level. So, whatever we bring to the table should be something that is sustainable something that will drive the economy so that something that improve our igr when today macaulay if you look at our gdp ratio nigeria is struggling to hit 600 billion dollars mm. nigerian economy mm. south africa is taking over egypt is taking over egypt has a long-term plan yeah. egypt today they are the fastest growing economy in africa mm. so what nigerians i think it's beyond the pro the protests yeah. generated the lot, but people are not taking the meat out of the protests. Mm -hmm. May I look at beyond the protests? Have we identified some of the things people say hunger? No, I don't think these are the things we should be looking at. I'm looking at how we can improve our revenue base. I'm looking at having the right people in the right places. Before I give you portfolio as a minister, mm. there should be proper screening what you are coming to do for me. If I put in 500 billion or if I put in 500 million to your ministry or 2 billion in your ministry, what is the aftermath? What do I gain? So these are ways and manners Mr. President can sit down and put out his glasses and look at, okay, I've overspent here and I don't gain him any comparative advantage. Mm. You are not creative. So it's easier through Aziz Abala Usman, who is overseeing the policy and coordinating affairs of Mr. President, to advise and tell Nigerians the truth. This is where we are. This is how far we have gone. These are those that are helping the economy to grow. Then at the same time, we work with the CBN. We work with the Minister of the, you know, Coordinating Minister of the Economy and Finance, Wale Edu, whose work is so much, mm. but so little is gaining. We are gaining, Nigerians are gaining from there. So it's by that time, Nigerians <coughs> will begin to ask questions, ask direct questions, no, not to attack. No, yes, yes. As we went down on this uh, topic, he has already delved into the solutions which we uh, you earlier uh, talked about. Can you add to what he said? 
Uh, in terms of uh, solution, uh, there are a lot of things, a lot of things, because what we are talking now is uh, <coughs> generally is on the area of uh, integration mm -hmm. within the African Union. Then uh, we, talk, we talk about uh, foreign direct investment as well, mm -hmm. because uh, even uh, if we are talking about the West coming in to invest in Africa, even other African countries too can equally come to Nigeria, Nigeria go to their country to invest. That is foreign direct investment. So, so the major challenges facing uh, this uh, sector generally in Nigeria and Africa is one, security, a uh, government policy, and uh, bad governance, general infrastructure, and all those things. Like uh, if you're talking about the least, uh, government policy, government policy recently the, the uh, 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 around the May or so, uh, the CEO, uh, Chief Executive Officer of uh, 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 Total Energies, he pulled off uh, over five billion dollar, a business billion dollar investment from here to. Uh, uh, which country is that? Is it Rwanda or uh, which, uh, which of the African country? Mm. Uh, like that. He pulled off uh, over six billion dollar from Nigeria, and that, that for us, policy flip flops. Yeah. So, so Nigeria government policies they are not favorable to business. Mm. In Africa, generally, government policies changes as they like. <laughs> you, any government, any anyone that comes to power changes his own policy. Mm. Recently. Uh, 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 rate of uh, this uh, borrowing rate or so CBN increases this, yes. and this and that and that is not good for businesses and if they are talking about a bilateral relation tends that that is economic in nature now mm -hmm. they have to look into some of these things and again you talk of insecurity mm -hmm. security is a very serious challenge because most of these people coming into our country to invest they value the life, uh, they value the security of their staff. Yeah. The security of their staff and even the business they are bringing into your country. They value it so much. So security, mm -hmm. we have to tackle security challenges uh, facing us, confronting us here. And the security issue, we, we, we control that based because uh, from uh, good governance. If we have good governance, there will be no so much uh, security challenges then the infrastructure in terms of infrastructure our road network here they are so bad there are some of these foreigners uh, coming in with their uh, businesses to establish business here they are coming from countries that have a uh, 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 real rail transport and in nigeria it's not uh, it's not it's not it's not like that so we we focus more on road normal road normal road and our roads are too bad for, to move your business, your goods from this uh, point to the other point in Nigeria is a very difficult challenge. Mm -hmm. If you go to other African countries, they are having equally the same problem. So and uh, so so uh, if we really want to to to, to diversify and uh, see how we boost our economy, mm -hmm. then the real uh, uh, the real uh, line have to 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 be revitalized. Okay. Uh, so 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 many things to be done. So many then education as well, mm -hmm. because there's no one like Nigeria now going to uh, Equatorial Guinea. If we are investing there and we will employ citizens of Equatorial Guinea to work for us, and they don't have the adequate training education that you if you give them guideline of what to do, they will use their senses to to. To, to do what you want them to do. Then it will be a challenge, big challenge. So education is another key factor. Then proper training. Okay. Like uh, the <coughs> CEO, uh, Chief Executive Officer of uh, uh, Total Energy complained. He said most people that they are even recruiting into their business here in Nigeria, if you want to train them, they, have, they, 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 they find it difficult to equally learn. <laughs> Meaning the educational background is 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 is, is, is not strong. Yeah. It's not strong. If you don't have sound education, there is no how even if you are there to put you through into. They don't even need the certificate. What they need is is the is the skills. is Cognitive. the skill Cognitive. is the skill. Mm. Yeah, yeah, is the skill that to say if they say this is how you do this. As they have told you that do it the way they want it, and that's all. They don't even need your certificate. Mm. So, so we don't have our education system is too weak, too too weak that uh, that uh, we don't have uh, we don't have that uh, cognitive uh, dissonance. Uh, yeah, so, mm. so it's a problem. It's a pro the problem. They are mm. too numerous, but. Uh, the, we, if we have good government, yeah. we can put all of this in place. And then you talk about uh, energy, power, mm. yeah. power. 
In Nigeria, again, a plenty of power mm -hmm. supply, mm -hmm. even not uh, the same thing with other African countries. Every day they increase. Today you are here, today you are paying 5,000 naira per unit. Tomorrow they say it's mm -hmm. 15,000. And you don't know what will happen in the okay. next uh, 24 hours again for another increment. It's a problem. It's a problem. Mm. No, Ori has mentioned so many things. Uh, what are those additional things that you, you, you may add, you know, to, for, for government to do to get the buy-in of the direct foreign investors into the country with regards to this, you know, as a direct response to this bilateral agreement signed between Equatorial Guinea and Nigeria? Uh, in, well, it's very simple in clear terms. Beyond signing the agreements, and um, you know, you need to develop what is called a protectionism. You have mm. to protect local manufacturers, and you have to make your investment climate very clear for investors to come in. Mm. Um, if you have a clear core policy of, say, in terms of uh, taxation, what people scare most investors mm. is that of multiple taxation. Okay. Then um, the MPC continue to dwindle. Sometimes you see it going, it never come down mm. for as much as 26, 27%. Uh, if investor is coming in, they will want to, you know, borrow from banks. Mm. Commercial banks are not even helping matter because of the pressure from the CBN. Mm. So we need to relax some of these laws and we need to give tax holidays to companies and import waivers to some goods which we believe they are going to add value to the economy. You know, these are some of the areas that government is finding it difficult. Must you look at taxing consumables, mm. the markets, the manufacturers, when you know your economy is weak. Economy is weak. Now, Macaulay, we, I read about two days ago, Nigeria is planning mm. to, by 2025, to generate about 6,000 megawatts yeah. of electricity yeah, in, in 2025. Mm. In 2025. <laughs> When Pretoria alone is generating 10,000 megawatts. Not for the whole country. Not for the Pretoria, Pretoria alone. alone. It's laughable. Yeah, it is. We don't need to be saying this it thing is. through the media. Because are you saying this to attract investment? in? Uh, Not in, at all. In, it will scare them. You, you already them. you have exposed a country, 36 states and Abuja, and you have over 200 million people dependent mm. on what? 6,000 megawatts in mm. 2025. Mm. And you say it's a futuristic plan. I think if I were to speak to Mr. President today, mm. I say, you know, put on your thinking cap and be decisive. Look, um, my Minister for Power, I'm giving you a target. Mm. I don't need 6,000 megawatts. I need 20,000 between our level. Do you know they will achieve it? He will work towards achieving it. See, you see, if you give me that assignment, so I need 20,000 megawatts. Yeah. I say, Mr. President, it's realizable. All I need is build partnership mm. and give deals out. Mm. And at the same time, where the you see electricity, where the, discos, mm. the discos are losing money and the Jenkos are losing money is because they are not doing proper metering. It's not about increasing the energy tariff. Mm. It's about meter every household. Make the meters available. Because there are a lot of people who are not connected to the national grid, but mm. they are using electricity yeah. through bypass. And you need to step down by increasing the involvement of the private sector. Mm. Give more licenses. And uh, you see, you cluster not, them. Not to cronies. No, no. <laughs> you see what happened in Abia? It exactly. can be replicated yeah. in all parts of the country. Exactly. Look at Kano, look at Lego. People yeah. are generating their own power now. Yeah, exactly. So if in Nasara here, Niger, people are generating power locally, it's easy for me to save energy that will, you know, that will, be, that will be used. And how many dams are today working in this country? Over 39 mm -hmm. are now working. The few that should power the energy sector, they are not even being properly utilized. No. So it's about time for, that's why I said, <laughs> if you are assigned a role to minister a, a, a portion of the Nigerian Republic, I think is beyond coming for fake meeting. Mm. I would rather stay away from fake meeting to be on site and call from the I, site I think, than I to be present in the fake meeting without nothing to this do. This is a very, very huge conversation. We're going to take a <laughs> critical look. I will take time to take mm -hmm. a critical look at the energy sector in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. uh, gentlemen, viewers, we're going to shift gears from bilateral agreement between Equatorial Guinea and Nigeria to salary of public servants where we're going to take a look at lack of transparency, 
and accountability. But that will be after this short commercial break. Please stay with us. You're welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is the Polity live from Kaftan Television Studios at Katampe Abuja, the nation's capital. And my name is Macaulay Honohashi. Uh, the Polity is a studio-based live discussion program where we open our telephone line for viewers to call in so that they can also make their opinion available to us so that the program can be conversational and more interactive. Still in the studios with me are uh, uh, Garba Ibrahim Iceman, a public affairs commentator, a journalist of repute, and also our in-house analyst, also a communication specialist, Richard O'Reilly. Richard, let me ask you this question before we went on that break. We're shifting gears from uh, bilateral relations between Nigeria and Equatorial Guinea to something that has come up, salaries of public servants. Only day before yesterday, a senator came out with a damning revelation that he goes home with a monthly salary of 21 million naira. And reactions have continued to trail this revelation. This is a country where we cannot be able to pay civil servants 30,000 naira. There was argument back and forth about uh, minimum wage, which government has finally agreed to pay 70,000 naira every month. Even at that, some state governors are still saying they cannot afford to pay that amount of money. But Nigeria is a country of enormous wealth but with widespread poverty in the country you know in, in the face of the display of wealth of arrogance by public servants where would would salaries of people not be known by nigerians after all we elected them yeah. to start with salaries of uh, people we elected not be known by nigeria i don't think that is true uh, and the statement coming from the senator to me, it was not uh, nationalistic enough. It wasn't uh, good for our national image. Okay. Uh, strong. And I think uh, National Assembly, the Senate will uh, call him to order. I, I, mean, I know very well. I watched uh, one of the, the chairman of a revenue, revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Commission yes. when he, he was clearing the air yesterday on uh, one of the national televisions. He pointed it out that uh, it's their responsibility to fix salaries of uh, public officers. And the, from their own uh, information, from what is available to them, the salary of uh, uh, senators uh, in Nigeria is uh, 1.063 uh, or 2 million naira. 1.06 1 or 2 million naira. That is what they have within their own uh, uh, department that is in charge of uh, fixing their salaries. If there is any other uh, remunerations that, 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 uh, that they accrue to making it up to 21 point something million naira, that that wasn't, uh, doesn't come from them. And if you see National Assembly, uh, Senators, House of Representative members, they have different uh, allowances mm. attached to them. And the basic salary of a uh, House of Rep members, uh, recently the spokesperson of the House of Representative, uh, honorable, uh, well, this is one of these. This honorable, I've forgotten the name from Lagos State. Mm -hmm. uh, he he cleared the air. He said the uh, House of Rep members uh, uh, receive a uh, six hundred thousand naira salary yeah. monthly, yeah. monthly. But if you put other allowances together to eat, it uh, uh, it, it, it can go up. Like uh, the senators, the uh, they, they have uh, domestic workers that they pay the salary directly to their own account again. Is from their own account that they pay those domestic workers. So, like a uh, House of Representative member, they have about uh, uh, five uh, legislative aides attached to them too, too, and they have domestic workers too attached to them. So, but the basic salary, I don't think the basic salary is twenty-one point something million naira, as they are speculating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not true, and I can say that categorically clear that it wasn't true. And the revenue, the thank God, the chairman of revenue of Legislative and Fiscal Commission came out boldly to say it to, to debunk that claim that it wasn't true. If there are other allowances uh, uh, coming to the senators uh, from National Assembly, he, he doesn't have s that information. But the senator who have uh, said that this is the, uh, the salary I receive, he can call it salary because they put everything together and paid to them. Mm -hmm. So it's their responsibility now to split it. So, so even in the National Assembly, I think uh, 
uh, like uh, uh, the uh, impress in the office. Yeah. Uh, before now, the last uh, National Assembly, the 19th uh, House of Representatives, uh, each House of Rep members were given 100 million naira impress, and that is annual. 100 million naira. Instead, when you have a shortage of uh, papers that you use in your office, you have a shortage of a uh, tissue, you have such a shortage of a uh, pen, virus that yeah. you use in the office, that you will write it to the admin department for them to give approval for the money to be given to you. Mm. What they do did was to put everything together for one year and give you the whole money. Okay. If you don't have all those things available in your office against your responsibility, that was what they did. And if that has been improved in this uh, administration, this current uh, 10th National Assembly, I don't know, but the, that of 9th Assembly, it was 100 million. And, uh, and, and, and if, they, if they say it now, they, they will say, okay, House of Rep member, mm -hmm. they collect 100 million naira just uh, one year for some doing nothing. Doing nothing. No, they use it to run their offices. They do, 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 do that, use that to run the office. Instead of uh, you writing, and because of that bureaucratic uh, bottleneck, you write now, you don't have a uh, tissue, you don't have this in the office, and you write before approval will be given and before the payment will be made. It will take a long time. That's why they put everything together. So the House of, uh, uh, that, is, that is for the House of Rep. If you come to Senate, it isn't it too. So the different allowances that they are paying them, like... Uh, in the House of Reds, I, I think uh, uh, they have uh, one uh, constituency allowance that mm -hmm. they uh, think they give monthly mm -hmm. about uh, uh, 7.6 uh, 7 million naira or so. Monthly. Uh, monthly, 7.6 million naira or so. And that one is for your constituency. Some of them, they are representing three local governments. And these three local governments, they are, the pressure coming to them. To me, if you look at what they are facing, <laughs> you sorry. will pity them. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, let's take this caller. Hello, good afternoon. This is the polity. I hope you are listening to us. That's why you're calling. Yeah, I could hear your panel of uh, analysis. Okay. What well, that man was trying to buttress. Yeah. Whether they pay salary or they call it interest, they call it this. This money is going to these people, direct or indirect. My name is the Prince from okay. Abuja. Okay, Chris, go ahead. This money is going to, yeah, this money is going to their cover. And then when we are talking, how can somebody who worked for just four years, because he's a member of a House of Rep of the National Assembly, getting over one point something billion naira, whereby somebody who worked for 35 good years, he cannot go for five million naira in his account. Mm. All these uh, domestic uh, uh, staff, all these uh, staff and staff and staff and staff. <laughs> so, what are we saying? Are we encouraging these people? Is it how it is being run in other countries? This work supposed to be a voluntary work, whereby you serve your community. Mm. Somebody mm. suggested that the wind should try to put uh, this thing as a part time and they see whether these people will be going there. Mm. There are some <laughs> countries in which uh, they, are, uh, they call you to come and uh, be their representative. You don't want to say you don't want to. Let me see that you know you are going to give your own money. But these people are giving up. If you put all this uh, figure together, this National Assembly. The, I mean, the amount of money that they are getting from uh, our account in a year is even more than uh, what three or four states are getting. And then what is their population in that national assembly? How many of them? 109. And mm -hmm. then the other uh, red, the red plus. 360. And then all these, they are staff and staff and staff. Everything 460. They are not 500,000. Yeah, how much are they is going to this uh, national assembly? The money for the car, are they paying it back? Are they paying it uh, uh, tax? When they go to toilet, we pay them. They pay tax. They pay tax. They, they did not tax for all their payments. We are sorry in this country. All this uh, analysis is so good for us at this particular time. <laughs> we should not figure out what they will make uh, people to go to, to jump out again. Okay, it's thank not you. Good. <laughs> What's the reality? We need to sit on the test of uh, uh, gunpowder right now. Thank you, Chris. Let's go straight to the point and mm -hmm. then keep the main. If they are to consider, the National Assembly is not bigger than the whole country. No, it's not. They are minute in number. So, anybody that's supposed to call, I mean, check the balance. It's the whole country that is National down. Assembly. Mm. You know. You're listening you know to them to be, no, to be I talking on your behalf. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much. Well Chris. spoken. Uh, well spoken. I wanted to react to what uh, Richard earlier said and also to Mr. Chris. 
who called and he was so vehement. You know, what uh, he said, I mm. uh, had a contrary view mm. because we are talking about cutting costs. What who said? What uh, my colleague here yeah. said. Okay, okay. Uh, I have a contrary view because at this point in time, we are talking about cutting costs. Mm. And it's good for us to be transparent in governance. Mm. Um, yes, it is a fact that uh, Senator Kao Sumela from Kano mm. mentioned that um, what he is getting what he is getting at the end of the month is 21 million naira. That's what he said. Even he if said it's it? going to be allowances and all that, but mm. if you factor this into other monies that are coming in, other overhead, which recently we bought them each member, 160 million naira worth, you know, per SUV mm. and all that. So there's a lot of costs that we need to cut down mm. in legislative management, and that is why today we are, you know, having problems with issues of governance. This monies. Over 70 billion, which was budgeted for this vehicle, why should we purchase new vehicle for them in the first place? If you are earning 21 million naira per month, if you are earning 21 million mm -hmm. naira per month, is it Nigerians' responsibility to purchase an SUV 160 million? These are the questions people are asking. Senator Shea Usani once said it. Obasanjo mentioned it that the people in the National Assembly were overpaid. So there's a need to check these excesses. And again, mm. when Saka Osumela was responding, he attacked Obasan just say, you sow the seed of corruption because yeah. of your total agenda. Mm. There's lack of transparency. And um, Nigeria has begun to probe into the affairs of mm. good governance. We are making it public now. For the first time, we are seeing that, yes, a senator come out to say, this is my take on pay. When Ningi mentioned the other time that some fraudulent activities, some insertions in the budget, the current budget, he was queried and suspended. Mm. Let's see what happened to Carl Sumela. Is okay. he going to be queried and suspended for exposing? So I think they should be very careful mm. because Nigerians are watching. Nigeria and Matrona, they are getting better. And it is time for us to talk about cutting cost of governance. Legislative functions is not something you consider as a permanent job. After four years, we are no longer there. You still go back to your constituencies to see votes. What we should be looking at is for the National Assembly to put themselves and help Nigerians. Mm. A lot of money. Mm. If you put out 70 billion into the economy, it will do a lot in terms of primary health care and other services which are begging for attention. And this is cash driven. Okay, let's take this caller. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We are on to the polity. On Kaftan Television, live from Abuja. Go ahead, please. We have lost this caller. Yes. So <laughs> it, 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 when you, what, that is why in, if you look at it cumulatively, what they are earning, look at their budget, over 100, 200 billion in, within the space of, just within the members of the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. Apart from this, you have constituency allowances. The other time, there were rumors that each center was giving 400 million, rep member 200 million. Within the space of one year, how much went into the National Assembly? But these are the same people. This is the same country where the minimum wage was 30,000 naira per worker, mm. a civil servant. You see, the discrepancy is so wide that. No, we need to close these gaps now mm. before it's implode. In Nigeria, okay. includes. Okay, he has mentioned the names of two senators, and uh, I would like to ask you this question, Richard. Uh, the, the, the current leadership of the Senate seems to be having a growing penchant for reprimanding uh, critical, you know, uh, senators that have critical minds against critical position that are taking critical positions against government. And what comes to mind is the suspension of. Senator Ningi, who, uh, who, who made some damning revel revelations against the, the Senate. And uh, in recent times, Senator Ndume from Southern Borno was removed from his committee, you know, for criticizing the, the president as chief whip. Now, do you entertain this fear that the, the, the Senator Kawu Smiler may face the full wrath of uh, the Senate leadership? What is there is that uh, in government generally, they have their rules. And even you today, if you are elected now to go and represent your people in mm. the National Assembly there, there's one thing you must do, mm. which is called oath of secrecy. Yeah. And that oath of secrecy uh, does not give you the right mm. to say things anyhow. anyhow. That's why they have spokespersons in the Senate and in the House of Representatives. It is not your duty 
to say what you are not supposed to exactly, say. Exactly. So, and that is why they are punishing whoever held in mm. that direction. Mm. Mm. And if there is a way for us to amend such uh, laws, even in the, in, the, in the executive department, they take that out of secrecy. Even the civil servants, they take that out of secrecy. But what, like my brother have just said, what we should be looking at is a uh, proper accountability mm. in governance, mm. 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 proper yeah. accountability in governance. And in democracy, we have it in three phases. In democracy, we have it in three phases, a vertical accountability, and we have it uh, 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 horizontal. Uh, 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 horizontal horizontal and uh, diagonal mm. the horizontal uh, accountability session of uh, democracy is about uh, checks and balances between the executive judiciary and all of those uh, mm. people mm. but in this case in this case now who is checking who exactly. in the executive uh, between the executive and okay, the legislature all the thoughts there is very interesting and uh, let's take this caller he's been calling since uh, good afternoon this is the polity Please go ahead. Go ahead, sir. We can hear you loud and clear. Your name and where you're calling from. My name is Sadiq Olushala. Sadiq Olushala from where? I'm speaking from Kogi State. From Kogi State. Go ahead. It's your show. Uh, You've got 30 from seconds. Kogi State. Go ahead. You have 30 seconds to yeah. give us your opinion. Please, I just want to react to what Mr. is saying. Go ahead, sir. There is a need for us to be transparent in this country. Mm. You can imagine a country whereby we are living somebody after serving the government for 35 good years mm. you cannot even boast of a roof over your head and somebody will go to the national assembly all in the name of senator or as of rep member and at the end of the day they will accrue over what was called about 2.20 billion mm. all in the name of the country and what type of transparency is that what type of government are we running look at what is happening in our country today people cannot even feed on three square meals not even come and talk about two square me. And here are these same people lavishing money on their girlfriend, buying exotic car, moving apart. Look at the protests. Look, those people are dying on the street. And yet we keep deceiving ourselves. So I'm very sorry what Mr. Uribe is saying. Mm. To say the fact you are not being trusted, and you do, you do not speak as a true Nigeria. Mm. So that is the fact. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, let me learn. The <laughs> transparency, transparency is in your hand, mm. and the accountability is you that we check them. Mm. The, I have talked about uh, 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 the uh, horizontal accountability, mm. which is between government and government. The vertical aspect and go to it is him who has just called myself and every other Nigerian who are voters in this country. Mm. The vertical aspect is. You give the you they, sh, do you, you they give the account ac they are accountable to you on the day of election mm. when they come for re election, it is your responsibility to deny them that uh, chance to represent you again. Mm. And then the diagonal aspect of it is the media is there who checks them mm. and the uh, civil society organizations. But are these people doing playing their role in mm. this country? Okay. And this elector, elector, uh, el el electorate who elect these uh, members into the national assembly and to Day now they are complaining mm -hmm. are they truly checking them when the election comes okay. so 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 those are the questions we okay. need to ask ourselves we mm -hmm. cannot just put in blame on these national assembly members mm -hmm. we should equally uh, 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 be self evaluating yeah. ourselves yeah, yeah. Uh, because uh, because the country belongs to all of us mm. and the way you cast your vote on the day of election count whether you are a true nigeria or you are not a true nigeria okay. a majority of us who are nigerians on the day of election instead of you selecting leaders based on national value national interest you select leaders on the basis of your own personal pocket okay. which is wrong okay. and that's why we are where we are now, uh, Richard, uh, I mean, I said Richard, uh, we we'll get by Isman, let's shift gears mm -hmm. again. Uh, we talked about the need for self -re evaluation and the fact that we need to mirror up ourselves as Nigerians, as the electorate. Now, let's take a look at the, the zero waiver that Mr. President has, uh, you know, provided for the importation of consumables as a direct response to the widespread hunger and, mm -hmm. and uh, that has pervaded the country. We're winding down. Please, what's your view on that? No, um, we have called for this uh, several times because we need to develop um, a system whereby there will be less pressure on the economy and the consumers. And part of the government policy, this one is a stopgap approach mm. between now and, and December. December 31st that we open up this window 
for people to import goods and at the same time trade around the border areas. But we have registered importers, mm. but should open up to other Nigerians to come in because, you know, over these years, we know how Nigerians, especially those in authority, behaves. They could assign this to their cronies, their girlfriends, their best friends and all that. At the end of the day, we do not achieve the intent mm. to which we want. And um, at the same time, you see, we want to make sure, we want to see a situation whereby within this window period we are granting these waivers what are nigerians doing and that is why i support fully what the chief of defense staff did by sending people to the, the military men behind the yeah. farmlands yeah. the nscds are deployed over ten thousand people personnel to the you know areas that are prone to these clashes between the herdsmen and the farmers mm. If we and there's wet season now, mm. and there's uh, from 90, what the report we had is there's going to be rainfall from September towards November. So, this period gives enough time for farmers to go back to the farm mm. and see what we can harvest within this period. And um, at the same time, we should boost our infrastructure because if you check the rules towards bringing this group from the farm to the cities, is becoming a little bit difficult for farmers. And then at the same time, we don't have preservation mechanism. We should be more warehouses now and food ban so that most of this produce, which we cannot export immediately, can be preserved. Mm -hmm. And even if we are going to export, we should, you see, there's this, uh, uh, the agricultural produce department, which I know we have then in the existing, we are not exploiting the mm -hmm. potentials, okay? And there should be harmonization now between, you know, the farmers, exporting products and this uh, ministry or agency or government because there's no synergy among this uh, group so this window period gives the authorities and the farmers and the stakeholders in agriculture the opportunity now to come together and factor okay. and think out you know something that is workable i'll be permanent so mm. that even after december 31st we should have more robust economy we should have food on our table and we should be able to you know fight inflation to the barest minimum because mm. in some countries like in us now mm. what the biden did inflation mm. has crashed to about three percent yeah and we are in 40. And we are in 40. Okay, Richard, really, very quickly, you have two minutes to answer this question, and uh, it will be your last question now. Um, how, what's your reaction to this zero tax waiver on the importation of uh, consumables between now and December? And then, how auspicious is it? And what are those modalities that government needs to put in place to have a seamless process? I think uh, what the government have done is uh, to see how this uh, food uh, insecurity that is uh, confronting us uh, mm. is, is, is minimized. And uh, my fear there is that uh, if uh, this, this waiver is given, and uh, what about the goods they are bringing in? Would that not uh, turn Nigeria into a dumping ground? Okay. The, the foods that they are bringing in, are they good? Would they be good for our health mm. as a nation? And again, uh, yeah, and th this is uh, the best time for Nigeria as a country, for us as a nation to think inward. Like Ministry of Agriculture, we have 36 states plus FCT today, and we have 774 local government in Nigeria today. Federal government have the capacity through the Ministry of Agriculture to have farmlands in all the 774 local government in Nigeria. Because if you are throwing this, this to the poor Nigerians now to go to the farm, now they have deployed their soldiers to the local communities mm. to go and guard the farmers. These farmers, do they have the means to, to, to even farm well now? Do they have the financial capacity? Mm. Government have that financial capacity. And if government can go mm. into farming, let's say if it is rice, Every nation of the world think on how to feed their, their citizens. citizens. So okay. Nigeria should think the same, mm. in the same direction as well. If we demand them going to the field mm. to farm, mm. let Ministry of Agriculture involve okay. in that. Well, uh, Richard, thank you so very much for coming to the polity. Uh, we, 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 we thank you so enormous for coming. It's my pleasure. Uh, we thank you so profoundly, uh, Garba. Ibrahim Iceman for coming to the polity. It's my pleasure. I thank our numerous viewers who found time to call in to make their contributions uh, on behalf of our producer Ruben Okala and the entire production team that made the program possible. I remain yours sincerely, Macaulay Honohashi Sane. Bye bye and see you next time.